Welcome to Ham Radio Q&A. What type of feed line should I be using for my antennas? In this video, we'll find out. Hi, this is Michael, KB9GBR, and welcome to the next installment of Ham Radio Q&A. This is where I take your questions and attempt to answer them in this video. So, do you have any questions about amateur radio, equipment, antennas, operating practices, or are there one of those how do I or why is it kind of questions? Well, let me know. Uh, drop me an email at kb9vbr at jpole-antenna.com or leave your question in the comments below and we'll answer them. So, with that being said, let's go on to our first questions. Kevin in Kentucky writes, what kind of coax do you think I need to buy? I'm guessing 50 feet. And is it male or female end that connects to the antenna? All right, great question. Let's talk about coax. Quite often I found that um, the choice of feed line cables uh, for, most, uh, for most systems is determined by budget and not by need or what's appropriate for cable for the situation. You know, I understand that, you know, money is tight, cable's expensive, and I like, you know, I like to find a good deal whenever I can, but saving money on cable really can have a detrimental effect to your enjoyment of the ham radio hobby. For example, uh, you spend money on a good antenna and a fancy rig and now you're ready to, to put that, in, uh, that radio on the air. So you take some measurements to find out how much feed line you need and holy smokes, um, that's a lot. You look at the prices, you know, what am I gonna, what am I gonna do? I can't afford that super low loss stuff, but um, maybe I can get something a little bit cheaper. So you end up with 150 feet of RJ58 because, you know, you want your shack in the basement and that antenna is way out on the edge of the property line. So cable is so long that no matter how much power you put into the system, you're running in a deficit. So let's step back a moment and um, look at the, at the rules that, are gov that govern, govern uh, feed line cable. Number one, keep your feed line cable as short as possible. And number two, use a cable with characteristic, loss characteristics appropriate to your operating frequencies. First, a little bit of physics. All cable will exhibit loss as the electrons move through the wire. Uh, they, they, they'll meet resistance and slow down. So one way to lessen those losses is to use a thicker cable. Also, RF energy does not travel through uh, the, entire, the entire thickness of the, of the center wire, but kind of floats along the top in a phenomenon called the skin effect. The, uh, the higher the frequency, the more the, the more the energy is towards the surface of the, of the wire and not, in the, and not flowing through the center, it's the center of the center conductor. So, uh, if you're using a uh, cable for, you know, for higher frequencies, for VHF, UHF, a uh, thicker cable can also help minimize or lessen those feed line losses. So on the HF bands, you know, the type of cable um, is not as critical as it is when you move up the, up the frequency spectrum like with VHF and UHF. RG8U or RG213 for that matter, matter would be acceptable choices on HF, but um, as you move up to the higher frequencies, it may show more losses than, it's, than you really want to see. So. With that in mind, let's try to use uh, the best quality cable appropriate to your operating frequency that you can afford. Oftentimes, the cost of feed line will be more than the price of the antenna you're using, but that's okay. It's easier to upgrade the antenna than to run another piece of coax. So, when you look at through the catalog of coax feed lines, you'll see myriad of options and sizes. You'll also see charts and graphs showing how much loss a cable will have at a certain frequency. Cables are produced for different frequencies, applications, and uses. So what cable do you pick? Well, first look at the length of the cable you need, and then the operating frequency. Now look at the chart of losses for popular cables. See how much loss is acceptable for you. Rule of thumb, you don't want loss to be more than the gain increase that your antenna provides. So pick, that, so pick the cable that meets that requirement. Now look at the price. Is the cable in your budget? If it's not, try to shorten the cable run. Can this antenna be located somewhere else to use less cable? Do this balancing act until you come up with a cable that has the length, loss, and price you can afford. So let's go back to the question. For 50 feet on a VHF antenna, I'd recommend RG8U. 
uh, the 50 foot run of RJU has about 1.4 dB of loss, which isn't too bad. Uh, next step up would be some, a low loss cable like LMR 400, which has uh, a lot less loss than the, than the RG8U, but um, it's also at a higher price point. A uh, step down would be something like RG8X, otherwise known as Mini 8. I like to use the Mini 8 for temporary setups, but um, you know, when I'm out in the field, but if I'm gonna install something permanent, I'm not gonna bother with that with that cable at all. It's just um, too much loss. Finally, let's talk about the connectors. Antennas uh, with or, or antennas and mobile base radios have the SO239 connector usually standard. Uh, these are also known as the UHF female connector. A uh, feed line uh, that will have the PL259 otherwise known as the UHF male connector. Uh, the PL259 mates to the SO239 uh, so order cable with PL259 connectors attached to it. There's another style of a uh, connector out there called the N connector. Uh, N connectors are low loss connectors and they are often preferred uh, by hams and uh, uh, commercial broadcasters and land mobile uh, operators, especially the ones that are using a UHF and higher frequencies. Uh, but for most uh, VHF uh, operation and HF operation, the SO239, PL259 can, uh, combination is, is pretty much standard. So unless you're Antenna or a radio requires the end connector, uh, go, with the, go with the SO and the PL cables. Well, that's it for another episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have another episode up in about a week, so be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel for notifications when new episodes are available. You can also follow us on our blog at uh, www.jpol-antenna.com. If you have a question you want answered on this show, drop me an email, kb9vbr at jpol-antenna.com, or leave it in the comments below. This is Michael, KB9VBR. Thanks for watching 73s and have a great day.